Now, Jason, you're wondering how many of these spotted magnificences live in the Juma area. Jason, not many. They are not common. And that's because areas like we're in now, which are, well, clear of too many trees, you can see are not common. We don't often have areas like this. Often, uh, mo more often than not, it's woodland. And cheetahs need areas like the one we're sitting in now. They cannot survive very effectively in woodland because they cannot hunt very effectively in woodland. He's a very fine fellow. Did you see where his brother went, Dave? Oh, there he is. Yes, quite. Oh, and the smell coming off this grass. Imagine the best kind of cut grass smell you've ever smelt in your life. Multiply that by ten, you get something close to how wonderful this really, f I mean, it's a fresh, I hesitate to use the word verdant again because I use it all the time, but it really does smell gorgeous. And I know that many of you are excited to see the brothers together because we know that they split up or they were split up. We don't really know why, quite possibly because of lions, I think it was, that chased them. But they've certainly managed to find each other now and they've disappeared. How many times have we driven straight past them, one has to ask? They've gone. <laughs> Tell me when you've got a shot, Dave. You got him. <laughs> now, I imagine they quite like that because it means that no lion can spot them either. As difficult as it is for us, so it is for anything that might harm them. Marvellous stuff. Trevor, um, I'm going to say no, but I'm not going to. I'm not sure. You say, do they look like they've eaten? Uh, that they've eaten recently. I'm not sure. I would say no. I mean, I don't think they're starving to death, but I don't know when the last time they ate was. Um, RJ Blade, you say, what purpose do the tear marks on the face serve? RJ Blade, I think that that will be debated for about as long as the debate over why zebra have stripes occurs. Uh, no one really knows why it is that they have got tear stripes. The sort of um, general consensus at the moment is that rather like a football player who paints darkness under his eyes when he's playing under floodlights, some cricket players do it as well, it's supposed to absorb light and so there's less reflection into the eyes. And because they hunt in the day rather than at night, they don't have the white fringes and around the eyes that, for example, the leopards and lions do. I'll just keep an eye on them. Now, poor old Roy is trying to get a view for his guests, but, you know, I mean, it's not easy. <laughs> they don't have the advantage of the camera, and if you look at that picture there, there's the other chap stuck his head up. This is wonderful. And the shadows are lengthening, as you can see. Oh, this is wonderful stuff. We might just try a little sneak forward. Should we try that, David? We don't want to get our shadow on him because that'll take away the guild and light. How's that, David? Pretty hopeless. That might be all we get. 
course we are to get out of the car then we'd have a wonderful view briefly now there have been two incidents of late where I've heard of cheetah one fatal and one not fatal attacking human beings and I'd never heard of it before because they're not animals that you would normally fear and certainly when you see them on foot their normal reaction is to just run away and those two incidents were combined with a story from Herbert where he says he was tracking a cheetah and he was charged by it and it disappeared I mean it gave him a rev and then it ran away but the point is that it chased him or did give him a rev and that's just not what we expect from cheetahs and so they're not to be underestimated. Beautiful view of the spots there. And if you're ever wondering what the difference between... Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? If you're wondering, what was I saying? What was I waffling about? Oh, Herbert. And um, that sort of thing. We often sort of... We don't think about them as being as uh, we think of because they're so low down in the predator hierarchy we think of them being fairly sort of insignificant almost and um, tame they're not these are wild animals wild cats now we've got a question about why they're always on cheetah plains well the answer is because it's open it has these open areas you'll never find them around the lodge you'll never find them in those woodlands where we often see elephants and often see Nkanyeni and sometimes Guchava. But almost always they are found here in the open areas. And what they do is they move between the open area here down to Malamala. They come up through here. They go up through Torchwood and Nkoro, which is not far from here. There's some clearings there. Then they go all the way up into parts of Biffle's Hook where there are different kinds of clearings. They're Gabbro clearings and uh, as opposed to these Sodic clearings and they hunt between those areas and then they come wandering down and their movements are actually relatively predictable. It's just very nice to have them at all, you know. Seldom do we have cheetah and that's because of the habitat as I've said. They're just wonderful things. Just question again, please. Uh, is it possible that one of these... Yes, Tweety Tweet. Oh, right. Uh, yes, Tweety Tweet, that is a very, very f fair assumption. You say, is it possible that one of these two is the father of one of the... or of the cubs that was seen recently on Biffle's Hook? Tweety Tweet, I'd say it's more than likely. And not a lot of cheetah around here, we know that, and so it's highly likely that one of them, one of these chaps, is the father. And the females also, I mean, they're not common around here, so it's very, it really is not um, inconceivable that, these, that one of them is the father. Now, for those of you who don't know, there was a female and four cubs found on found on Biffle's Hook recently. I'm just going to quickly ask how many people are coming to the sighting because my radio is not working very well. Vanga ke vata figara. Na men ta famba. Ya uim. Loko va figa ni ta famba. All right. Okay. I'm just having a discussion there about whether we can stay or not. I don't know what they're doing there. Hmm. Are we smelling? There can't be another female, surely. Oh, that's beautiful. That's stunning. <laughs> that really is gorgeous. Maybe there's water there. 
You see them drinking maybe water? There's definitely a hole. This is just beautiful. Right, we're going to turn around now because they're going to start moving. Now, Susan, in all the way from Germany, you're wondering how old they are. And Susan, I must confess to you that I've got absolutely no idea. Potential lifespan of 12 to 13 years, and I don't think I don't think they look old to me. They look fairly well muscled, not in any kind of distress or difficulty. So I'm going to say, in their prime between four and five maybe, maybe six. Could be up to eight though, you know. I wouldn't say they're older than eight, but I might be wrong. You know, I've spent so little time around Cheetah in the same way that you've spent uh, relatively little time around Cheetah because, well, you watch these safaris over here and we'd see leopard far more frequently than we do Cheetah. Uh, I couldn't tell you exactly how old they are. And, you know, where I look at a leopard and give you a vague guess as to its age, the cheetah are much more difficult. And Tristan, apparently, who's got more experience in this area, says that he reckons they're 10 or 12. I would have thought 12 was quite old for them. So we'll call it an even 10, shall we? Yeah, we come into a slightly more open area here. These chaps are going to disappear. Oh, monotonous lark in the way. Yeah, I think they're going to cross over the boundary, I'm afraid. I'm going to get try and get in front of them so we can get a slightly better view. But the boundary is now coming up, unfortunately, quite quickly. And Lissa, you say, oh, they are just gorgeous. They are very gorgeous if you can be very gorgeous and that's what these chaps are isn't that wonderful And Eve, you say, is there a limit to cars on the sighting? Eve, absolutely there's a limit to the cars on the sighting. There are only three allowed. But we seem to be in a position where we're allowed to stay. So that's very exciting. I don't think we have to move, which is great news. Hmm. Because no one else is here. And these chaps are about to unfortunately cross the boundary, so some people are going to miss out on what we have been thoroughly enjoying. Ooh, there'll be a bit of a territorial marking there. That's what's going on there. Sniffing, just to tell. Is my scent correctly placed here? Yes, apparently it is. And whenever I've watched these chaps, one of them does a lot more marking than the other. I'm not sure why that should be the case. Ooh. Come on, have a lie down there. It's a nice little open patch. Rand, it is yes and no, you say. Is it true that they don't have retractable claws like other cats? Rand, no cats actually have retractable claws. They've got, I'm, I'm being pedantic here, but they've got what we call protractable claws. The resting position is the claws actually in. So that's the resting position, but they can push them out. Now, the cheetah has got a semi-protractable claw, which means it's halfway out at rest. It can push them all the way out, but at, in resting position, so you can imagine when they're running, they don't want to expend energy pushing the claws out. So when they're running, they get pushed, uh, well, 
probably not when they're running. When they're running, they, they're halfway out, and that gives them an extra spiky grip. But they don't use them for killing in any, anything like the same way that a, um, like a cheetah or a lion will. Ah, you mean Zanu Kualan? Uh huh. Some float. Kui. Some float. Oh. <laughs> He's just telling me a joke then. Shangan saying, can you see how upset they are? They're crying. Look at their tear marks. Tony, you're wondering what language I'm speaking. It's a bad shangan, I'm afraid. I'd love it to be much better than it is. Beautiful. Uh, Lady Starfire, you say, have I ever seen a cheetah at full stretch, running at full stretch? And the answer is, yes I have, but not for an extended period. So I've seen the cheetah running and then sort of disappearing into the bushes. I haven't seen those classic sort of shots that you get largely of East Africa, of course, when they are herring across the plains and the cameramen's managed to get them in full flight for a full chase. I haven't managed to see that yet. But these clearings, of course, would be the ideal place to do that. It's two vehicle sighting. It's two vehicle sighting. Oh. I'm loving the farm. Okay. That's arm. Oh, and that's worn. Okay. Yeah, he's just saying why we can stay, because they keep moving out to making space for each other, but it's because they're only allowed one from their property on at a time. So we're allowed to stay. Marvellous. Jenny, your answer is most easily answered by discussing the ter territoriality. You say, do cheetah fight when they meet up? Uh, no, they don't, normally, because they are not territorial, well, not strictly territorial. They will avoid conflict. But they do fight from time to time, and I've certainly heard reports of females, especially with youngsters, being attacked by males. These guys have not eaten. They are very, very skinny. And if we're trying to assess their ages, if we look at the one that's in front there, Dave, you can see your very moth-eaten ears. So maybe they're about 10. I can't believe that they're older than 10, though. They might be. I wonder if anybody's known them since they were cubs. I'm not sure when the first time they were seen on Safari Live was, but of course we've only had cheetah planes for just over a year. flicking there. Much sleeping to be had. But this is brilliant. We're not going anywhere at all. I'm going to stay right here until they cross the boundary because they will almost certainly do that. They're a little bit itchy. They're probably feeling a little bit like Taylor. They've been walking through this long grass. I bet she wants to sort of have a roll around in a dusty area and stay itch-free. I'm just picturing Taylor do that now, actually. It's quite amusing. And all around the monotonous larks call. Light starts to soften, the shadows lengthen as we head towards another gorgeous low felt African evening. Marvellous. What else can we... Let's just try and maybe move slightly around the other side there. And while we do that, 
Let's head across to Tristan 